This is the only digital marketing strategy you will ever need. Well, not this, this is mine. But this is a truly ninja customer acquisition strategy that any business can use. Starting with N, nobody cares. Sorry, sorry, kinda true. Think about the stores that you buy your clothes from. Why do you buy from there? Probably stuff like, I know the clothes fit me well, I like the quality, I like the price, people I like shop there. I know I look absolutely banging in the clothes, you know, whatever it might be. Now imagine someone just walked up to your door, knocked and said, ah, I need you to stop buying your clothes from there, buy your clothes from us instead, because we sell clothes too. What reason do you have to buy from them? None, you do not care. The brutal truth is that a lot of businesses are actually just a slightly worse version of their competitors, or at least that's what they look like online. Now back to the clothes thing. Imagine that you see an ad on Instagram from a new clothing retailer. Other ad platforms are available. This ad has been targeted at you based on your age and demographics and your interest in similar brands. It shows someone with a similar body type to you looking absolutely sick in these clothes. They're doing the sort of activities that you do. They basically look like you, but they look way better because these clothes are just amazing. You can immediately tell from the tone of voice in the ad that this brand is right up your street. Now this time you're interested, you have a reason to care that this brand exists. The same applies to your business. If you've got a website that looks like everyone else's, your USPs are basically the same, and your audience is pretty much everyone, you're gonna have real trouble getting anybody to care about your brand. Let me tell you a story about this. So we've been running the service called Fix Your Machine lately, and it's basically where we tune up a business's marketing. Now we've been working with a client to do this who builds custom PCs. Now to be brutally honest, their website looks like a sort of worse version of everyone else's. They have less stock longer delivery times and a far worse website. I know I'm not selling them particularly well, but get this. After speaking with them though, we find out that they actually personally speak to every one of their customers and sometimes for hours on the phone to make sure that they get the right PC for them. So they go through all of the components checking that they're gonna be suitable for the particular use that they want this PC for. If they can get the same result with cheaper components, then they won't oversell them on the latest things. They'll sell them the components that they really need to get that result. And that's really important because people about to spend thousands on a new custom PC are really scared that they're gonna get the wrong thing. But by explaining this and telling this story on the website, we're able to turn their small size actually into a competitive advantage against larger competitors who just want to sell them whatever they've got in the warehouse. And this is why making people care is the first step in your digital marketing. So why should people care about your brand? And more importantly, why should they buy from you rather than your competitors? Being able to answer these questions is the first step in your marketing strategy. I is for investigate competitors, aka competitive research. But there's no C in Ninja. Huh? Did you see what we did there? Enough dad jokes and more marketing strategy. Your competitors are a total gold mine when it comes to marketing strategy. And not just your competitors, but any business that you aspire to be like. And if you're unsure who your online competitors are, just head over to Google and type in your target keyword and you will see them. By looking at their websites and their marketing strategy, you can see what type of content is working well for them. And you can use a tool like SEMrush to get this data. But just don't pay full price for it. Get a free 30-day trial at thankyouninjas.com. You can start by analyzing their content, see why certain pages are performing better than others. And are there any patterns across different competitors? Are there any topics that haven't been covered that your customers might find valuable? Steal their winning strategy, but just make it better. Beat them at their own game. We mean take inspiration from. But good artists borrow, great artists steal. If a content idea that you've had has resulted in very little traffic for your competitors, you may want to reconsider. On the other hand, if a competitor has nailed a content idea that you've had, then you know that you need to do it better. Is it just their content you should look at? You should also be looking at things like the calls to action that they have on their website, the social media platforms that they post to, the events that they attend or hold, and the publications that they're featured in. In this teardown that we did of Huel's Digital Marketing, you'll see we analyzed their website, their SEO, their content, and their competitors, all using publicly available data through SEMrush. And you can do exactly this for your competitors. Of course, you don't wanna be identical to your competitors, so one way you can stand out is by knowing your audience. That doesn't, that doesn't start with an N. No, it doesn't. I'm just working with what I've got. It always shocks me how many businesses don't know the answer to who is your target audience. I'll give you some red flag answers to this question. Ready? It depends. Everyone who... We don't really have a target audience. The audience that you choose to market to has a huge impact on your marketing activity. It influences the marketing channels that you use, your tone of voice, even the fonts, colors, and images that you use in your branding. And without a clear target audience, the rest of your marketing activity just gets lost. For example, Aviva sells insurance in the UK, but 
Because they sell to such a broad audience, it's really difficult to tell who they are for. Obviously, they have a wide variety of different customers, which means they have to use a really generic message. So the only things they can really focus on are how many customers they've got and how long they've been around. Contrast this with Lemonade Insurance, who has a much clearer target audience, and that allows them to really concentrate their tone of voice on that audience. For example, on their homepage, you can see that their target audience is called out with the images and the testimonials that they're using. They know that this target audience finds traditional stuffy insurers to be a bit boring, and they can liven this up through their copy. For example, instead of saying, get contents insurance, they just say, keep your stuff safe. To an audience that's turned off by traditionally boring jargony insurance, that's really compelling. And if you have a look at their testimonials, their audience really, really resonates with this brand. They feel like they're on the same level. This is why choosing a clear target audience is one of the most important elements of any marketing strategy. Without it, your marketing just won't connect with your target customers. And by the way, if you're not sure whether your marketing strategy matches your target audience or you need some help with your strategy, why not go and request a free website marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja? It really helps to get a fresh pair of eyes on this type of stuff from people who live and breathe digital marketing. Go, 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 go. And it's free. Next up in our very natural acronym, Jargon is L. Hold on, hold on. What if my target audience does like jargon? Well, number one, that's why it's important to know your target audience. But number two, do they really like jargon? Let's say that you're selling medical equipment. Your target audience might be medical facilities, but that doesn't mean the person on your website is going to be the top surgeon. The person comparing different options at the early stages is likely to be someone with much less experience who's just been tasked with researching options. They may have just been told that we need something that produces better images rather than Crystal beam utilizes arbitrary waveform transmission, massive parallel beamforming, and synthetic aperture technologies to produce a faster frame rate and improve image uniformity. So what does what now? Exactly. How did Nutribullet disrupt the food blender market? They understood that their customers don't care about jargon. The incumbents like Bosch were and still are talking about all technical stuff the number of switching stages and the blade construction. While Nutribullet bounced in talking about making delicious smoothies and the health benefits of fruit. So what's the audience really buying? Now the best way to find out whether or not your customers like jargon is to talk to your customer service or sales teams. After all, these are the people in the business that speak to your customers most often, so they're usually the best calibrated to the way that your customers actually think and talk. Spoiler alert though, they probably care more about benefits and what it actually means to them than any specific jargon. Do you think the average blender buyer makes their decision based on connection rating wattage or body construction material? Different crew, folks. Um, I've made loads of these mistakes in my marketing. Am I doomed? Yeah, I'll just sell your body to science immediately. Existential crises aside, as long as you're learning from these mistakes, you are not doomed. Which brings us on to our last letter. Acknowledge failures. Marketing is all about trial and error. Yes, you can make informed decisions based on your target audience, your offering and your competitors, but even the best marketers every so often get it wrong. The most important thing you can do is consistently go back and figure out why something didn't work. Analyzing failure like this helps with all of the above steps. So maybe you're getting your target audience's attention, but they're not buying. Well, when's the last time you actually spoke to people that didn't buy from you? They might have come into your world, signed up for your email list, but they didn't purchase. Getting feedback from non-buyers can be one of the most useful things you can do. You might find that the things that you've been emphasizing in your marketing actually don't mean that much to your target customers. Or they didn't get a key objection handled, so they just couldn't make the purchase. One pattern that we see a lot is a really competitive space with loads of really well-funded competitors all fighting it out for a fairly small customer base. They're fighting so hard and spending so much that they're all losing money on customer acquisition. A new company will come in, dip their toe in, get burned, and immediately decide that the whole thing's a washout. Made that mistake, not going back. But actually, if they could be smart, take a step back and find a more economical way of reaching those customers. There might be loads of potential there. Let's say, for example, that you're running Google Ads and everyone in your space is targeting the same bottom of funnel keywords, so their CPCs are really expensive. Or well, maybe you could target top of funnel phrases, drive people to content instead, and then retarget them much cheaper. Great marketing means optimizing and refining your process over time, noticing what works and what doesn't and refining based on that. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now you've mastered the ninja marketing framework, it's time to build a solid marketing strategy. But with so many channels to choose from, it's difficult to know what to prioritize. This video teaches you everything you need to know to cut down and choose the digital marketing channels that are gonna generate the most sales for you. 